Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Mark again. Today I'm going to be telling you guys a little bit about my latest project. And this is the e-bike that I've been building to take hunting out here in Florida. But before I get to that, I just want to remind you guys that we are almost at 300 subscribers. And as I've promised in previous videos, that means that we're going to do another giveaway. This time around, we're going to be giving away some really sweet new broadheads that just came out. And I'll be putting out a video about that in a day or two. So look out for that. So the purpose of this video is to go over uh, everything that I went through to build this bike. Now, what I found in building this is that there's not a lot of information about how to DIY one of these bikes together. Um, and really there's a lot of trial and error involved. So I'm going to tell you what parts I used and how I made this thing work. So the first step was to find a bike that I could use. Now you can just go on like Walmart or something like that and buy yourself a uh, mongoose malice or a dolomite and they're like $220 and they'll do just fine. Um, they're a steel frame bike, they're relatively cheap. Now that was originally my plan but I was looking around on like Craigslist and offer up and things like that to see if I could find a better quality lighter bike uh, for, for about the same price and I ended up actually finding this. This is a gravity bullseye monster it's like a thousand dollar bike. I ended up picking it up for two hundred twenty five dollars. So that was super sweet. So I started there um, and from there I had to think about what components I was going to use to turn this into an e-bike. Now I knew I wanted to have thousand, a thousand watts 48 volt system. That way I'd have enough power to get through some of the nasty swampy stuff that I'd be biking through. So I started looking around on eBay and I ended up picking up a Voila Mart uh, kit and I'll post the link to that down in the description. You can see down here this is the motor so this is a uh, typical hub motor um, and this kit came along with everything that you need. It had the control box, it had the throttle, it had the brake. Uh, these have cutoff sensors so that when you hit the brakes they cut the power to the motor. Uh, they really had everything that I needed to get going. Um, so let me first review that kit before I go any further. So the control box I've actually put inside of uh, this box right here and currently it's just a pencil case that I cut a hole in the side of so I can run the cables out of it. Uh, and I did that just because it's Florida, there's a lot of rain and I know that I'm going to be running through a lot of wet conditions and I wanted to make sure that, that box stayed nice and dry. Now I have a good friend of mine, he's actually replacing this box for me with uh, with a, a 3D printed box that's going to fit perfectly in its place, sit a little bit lower so that I have a little more space to move my seat down if, for instance, I wanted to let my girlfriend ride it or somebody else who's a little bit smaller than me. Um, so the installation of this kit was actually incredibly easy. All I had to do was uh, simply take off the old wheel, which took seconds because it just had a little hand lever untwisted it popped right off um, and this kit actually slotted right in to um, the, the axle slots on the frame with no problem it went right in there cranked down the bolts um, the cassette that came with the kit uh, is a seven gear cassette whereas the original was an eight gear cassette um, but the spacing between the gears is actually exactly the same so the gear shifting worked just fine when I switched it over. I simply had to adjust my, um, my derailleur so that I couldn't accidentally shift uh, down to uh, the lowest gear and basically just pop the chain right off. So that was uh, relatively easy. Um, it comes with a little uh, uh, tool kit which I stuck right here. I've got all my tools in there. Now, the tools didn't come with it, I should say that. I bought my own tools for that. Um, as far as everything that goes up here on the handlebars, it was super easy to install. Simply pulled the old grips off, um, took the brakes off, or sorry, I took, took the brakes off and I moved the, the uh, gear shifters inward so that I have a little bit of space to work. Um, put these new brake levers on there with really no problems. And, oh, and I almost forgot to mention, probably the hardest part about installing the Voila Mart e-bike kit was actually putting the um, the uh, pedal assist 
sensor in place and you can't actually see it from that side um, but I'm going to zoom in on that right now so this right here is the pedal assist sensor and this was definitely the hardest part to get set up on this bike so as you can see it's basically made of two components you have the sensor right here that's attached to the frame and then you have this magnetic disc that's attached to the crank and as that spins either forward or backward the sensor tells the computer what's going on uh, so when you pedal forward the uh, the pedal assist uh, starts to uh, send power to the motor to help you pedal um, in order to install that I actually had to pull the crank apart and it turns out that in order to do that I needed to buy a special tool so this is what they call a square tapered uh, crank assembly and you can actually buy tools for that on Amazon pretty cheap I think I paid $15 for the tool um, which is basically a puller that screws into the crank right here and then a bolt goes in you crank that bolt down and it pulls the crank right off so it really wasn't that difficult to get it off once you have the right tool but if you don't have the right tool uh, it's gonna be really difficult I tried to get it off uh, a few different ways none of them really worked. so just go ahead and get yourself the tool once you have the crank off the instruction manual actually tells you to mount this sensor with super glue and after studying it for a while I realized that that might actually be the best option I really didn't see anything else uh, that we could do so so what I ended up doing uh, is cleaning it up really well with alcohol and then coating it with some uh, some heavy-duty Gorilla super glue so the Gorilla um, gel and um, and honestly I'm pretty surprised at how well it's held up it has not moved at all it seems relatively sturdy so so maybe it's not as bad as I thought it would be it didn't seem like a super sturdy uh, fix but uh, until that fails I probably won't be looking for a different way to attach it everything hooks up to the control uh, box really easily it's all uh, color coded the plugs look like they're pretty good quality now um, when I hooked those up I did put a little bit of dielectric grease on all the connections just to make sure I don't have any issues with corrosion as I'm driving around in wet conditions so that said um, the kit was super easy to install uh, the next component that you need is a battery so I was looking for a good deal uh, on Amazon and eBay and such and I knew I wanted the highest amp hourage that I could get because that would get me the most miles uh, on my bike and we do like to trek in pretty far so I ended up getting this one right here and this is a, a, a Wallen Power uh, 16 amp hour battery uh, it uses Panasonic cells so those are high quality cells uh, that allows you to get that much power in such a small battery. This, this last part, the fact that it's a small battery, was really important because the frame of this particular bike, the Gravity Bullseye, is relatively small, and as you can see, I'm taking up most of the space in there. In fact, with a lot of bikes, there's a little more space right here, and you'd be able to put your controller um, in there but there's absolutely no way I could do that and that's why I ended up mounting mine back here um, this, this battery will cost you I think 410 or 420 dollars on Amazon so check that out it's Wallen Power I'll put the link to that down below uh, their customer service was pretty good uh, I honestly I had to ask them a couple questions uh, about uh, the charging methods uh, because it wasn't super clear to me there was no instructions with it but they were really helpful in explaining all of that so um, I'm pretty happy with that so it has a little switch right here to turn on the power and then there's also a kill switch on the the controls right here so you basically have two um, two kill switches uh, that control the power um, so to mount this battery typically you would simply take off the um, the bottle uh, holder that would be mounted here on the down rail now and, and then you would just mount with the screws that came with it you would mount it straight on to that well that was a bit of a problem I wasn't able to do that with this bike because the uh, the 
bottle holder was actually so low down, I think the mounts were about here, and that was a problem because the mounts on this battery um, mounting plate are kind of high up. And I mean, if I were to use the, the screw holes that were already on this frame, this battery would have had to have been way down here, so that obviously couldn't work. So to get around that, I actually just got some quarter inch bolts and I drilled straight through uh, this down tube um, and I, I got some uh, rounded nuts on the end here that I put on and cranked it down and it's super solid and that's not coming off. So uh, I'm quite happy with how that turned out and that was an easy fix. Uh, if anybody else is trying to do that, the bolt length that you're going to need uh, is going to be about two and a quarter inch, but I bought two and a half inches and I simply cut off the amount that I didn't need once it was put in place. So that pretty much covers all of the power components here. And, um, and obviously you can see I've done some serious modifications to the frame and, and, and the physical setup of the bike. So I'll go over those right now. So first of all, um, me and Danny welded up these frames together. Now I have to admit that this was mostly Danny's idea. He already put one on his bike as well. And I'm not going to give away all the secrets of how to do that. Um, but I believe that Danny is willing to sell these uh, after he uh, you know, figures out some of the kinks and uh, gets it nailed down. But anyway, uh, this is just a uh, simple uh, design, but it's really solid. You could easily throw a deer over the back of this and ride out with it if you wanted to. Uh, so that mounts down here by the axle, and then there's a couple uh, screw holes that are already in place for mounting a rack right here. So we've got bars coming up like that, and these bars right here. Uh, on the front, we did something very similar, welded this up, and I have these support bars coming down, attaching to the front fork. So that was relatively simple, and it works really well. And I really needed that front rack because, as I mentioned before in one of my other videos, uh, I'm technically a disabled hunter this season because I had surgery on my shoulder. So I'm actually hunting with a crossbow and I really didn't feel comfortable carrying around a crossbow uh, if it was going to be banging into anything. So I created this, uh, this basket situation here. It's got padding so I can lay my crossbow right down here. And I have a bungee attached to the bottom of it that I can go right over the crossbow and hook it up so that crossbow doesn't move while I'm riding in. That actually worked incredibly well, uh, and maybe in another video I'll, I'll show you guys how it seats in there. Um, and yeah, so uh, so you guys can copy that. It's a pretty cool design. Um, and obviously you can see I've got these fenders set up here. Now I did make some footage on how to make these fenders, uh, but editing these videos down takes a lot of time. So if you're interested in, in seeing how exactly I made these fenders, uh, drop a comment below and give me some motivation to edit those videos down for you. Uh, but essentially what I did is uh, I took some PVC pipe and I, uh, I melted it so that it got soft and I bent it into the shape that I needed. And, and, and like I said, I can show you exactly how to do that if you're interested. Uh, obviously they're white and the bike is black. It's just because I haven't gotten around to painting them yet and I do intend to paint them. So, to extend these fenders just a little bit, I used some uh, thin plastic material um, as like mud flaps that I added on the front here. I put one down here as well, and this protects my feet from getting uh, hit by any water. And this front fender is supported here with this support beam that I made out of just a random piece of uh, metal tubing that I had laying around. I bent that into shape, and uh, that helps support everything. And um, there's also a mud flap up the front here, which you probably can't see very well, but that stops all my stuff in the basket from getting dirty. Um, and I just simply zip tied these fenders into place on the frame and on these, uh, these carriers uh, that I made. So here we have the uh, point of view angle for riding this bike and I wanted to show you this just so that I can show you uh, the controls on this thing. Now one of the things that kind of sucks about this kit is that 
even though Voilamart does sell kits with an LCD screen that goes right here, and that LCD screen can tell you all kinds of things like how fast you're going, how much battery life you have left, how much distance you can still travel with the battery life that you have left, and all kinds of useful information like that. This particular fat bike kick does not come with that feature. Um, and I emailed Voilamart to figure out if I could get that feature on this setup. And they said that you can, but it is not a kit that they sell. So you have to upgrade separately. Now let me show you my qualms with this particular setup. Let me just turn on the power here. So, as you can see, let me zoom in on that. Oh, there's really bad lighting. So as you can see, if I cover the light a little bit, all that this tells you is how much battery power you have. That's all it is. Those three bars there telling you it's full. If it gets down to the bottom bar, which will show up in yellow, it means you're basically on empty. And you can hit this switch. All that does is just turn the power off. So even though it does tell you the battery life that you have left, that's all it tells you. So I didn't particularly like that. So like I said, this control option isn't the best, but there is an option to get rid of it and switch to a more informative LCD screen. And that LCD screen system comes with a lot of benefits and I think it's worth spending the money. Now when I asked them about what it was gonna cost to switch to that system, they basically told me that the control box that comes with this kit would not do the trick because there are extra wires attached to the control box for the LCD screen. So I would have to buy a new control box, which is $35. Then I would have to get a new throttle that doesn't have this little display here, which is like $10. And then I would have to buy the LCD screen. So you put it all together and you're looking at about $80 to $90. Now I think that it's worth it, despite the fact that this kit by itself was $160. So you're looking at now spending like 250 I still think it's worth it and I'll tell you why because not only does it give you that LCD that tells you a little bit more that LCD allows you to control how much power you're putting down with the pedal assist function now as the pedal assist function is right now it's simply on or off when you start pedaling there's no limit to how much power it will put down to assist you so as you start to pedal faster it'll start moving you faster and honestly it's basically useless in this uh, in this current setup because I end up going way too fast when I use this system. Now, if you have the LCD screen, you can change it from setting one, two, three, four, or five, which means that you can control how much power is being put down so you can keep a nice slow speed without putting in a ton of effort. That way you're not breaking a sweat, but you're not using up as much battery. And that's a really important part because when I take this out of the woods, I'm basically not pedaling, I'm just using the throttle, and I get about nine miles uh, of off-road use uh, from just using the throttle. Now I know that if I were to be pedaling along with that, I could get significantly more than that. Another thing I don't like about this particular setup is that the throttle is a twist throttle that you would typically see on a motorcycle. Now, even though it's pretty cool and it feels cool to be able to, you know, just grip it and rip it, um, the problem that I have with it is that it's relatively unstable when you're biking over bumps. I find myself putting in a lot of effort to try and stabilize that throttle as I'm going over those bumps. If you have a thumb throttle, I find that when you're going over bumps, it's a lot easier to keep it steady. So when I upgrade, I'm probably going to replace this thing for a thumb style throttle. Um, let's see, what else uh, do I not like about this particular setup? Um, so, okay, I think that covers the Voila Mart setup, but let's talk about the bike itself. Now, fat tires are relatively soft and squishy. You run them at like 5 to 10 PSI. So, when you hit bumps, you don't actually feel it too much. But, if you plan on driving this thing on the road, which I have done a little bit of, and honestly, that's not the point of this bike, but sometimes I will want to drive it on the road. You want to pump up the tires 
nice and hard about 20 psi is their max and i suggest if you're going on the road with it you want that because otherwise it's so heavy to turn now when the tires are pumped up that high you basically lose all of that cushioning that those wheels give you and on the road this setup will push me along at about 30 miles maybe 35 miles an hour which is super fast on a bike this light when you hit bumps going at that speed with no suspension it's fucking terrifying uh, the whole thing shakes you feel like the bike's gonna snap in half and honestly I've already started noticing that there's a little bit of play starting to form in my steering tube here uh, so I am planning on upgrading this front fork to a suspension fork there's a number of different forks available out there and the nice thing about this simply being a mountain bike is that if you just get the right size for the steering tube you can pretty much fit any front fork on there that you want so once I make that upgrade I'll do uh, another video to uh, show you what I did um, same thing goes for the rear there's no suspension there so uh, I plan on getting some suspension for my seat. You can get seat post suspension uh, and it's relatively cheap. You can get it for like $20 or $30. So I intend on getting one of those and maybe even upgrading my seat just to give myself a little bit more cushion when I'm going over bumps. So those are pretty much the only upgrades that I want to make on this bike and at that point it's going to be uh, completely ready to go. So I'm sure you're all wondering how much money did I spend on this thing in total because that's the big question. Keep in mind, you can buy a ready-made setup uh, like the one that Danny bought for about $1,500. It's called the, um, uh, the Rad Rover, and uh, it's a super sweet bike. It's got front suspension. It doesn't have rear suspension. Uh, it has a few uh, uh, features on it that this bike is currently lacking. It does have that LCD-style screen, so you have better control over your pedal assist. It's a pretty sweet bike, but it's only 750 watts, and this one is significantly faster than the one uh, that Danny built. So it's really uh, what you want to do. You can buy that bike, and I think he's paying like 100 bucks a month uh, to pay that off. Now, if you're like me, you don't like to spend money on a credit card. You just want to pay things outright, so this might be the better route for you. Uh, like I spe said, I spent $225 on the bike. Um, on these racks, I honestly spent like 20 bucks because I just had to buy some uh, some metal tubing and weld that up myself. So those are pretty cheap. The PVC pipes I had laying around in my garage, so those really didn't cost me anything either. Um, most of this is rigged up pretty simple. I switched out the chain; it was like eight bucks. Nobody cares about that. The big cost is going to be your uh, your battery. Now, like I said, you can get this battery for like 410 dollars. I ended up getting a really sweet deal because I think the company that uh, posted it on Amazon made a mistake and I saw that and I dominated as quickly as I could. I ended up getting this battery for $310, which was pretty sweet. Um, so all in all, I think I've got about $700 into it now. Once I get the suspension and the computer upgrade, uh, we're looking at probably about... Um, just underneath a thousand dollars probably about 900 bucks uh, for a pretty sweet pretty fast uh, e-bike fat tire bike that uh, can pretty much go anywhere that you want it to go in the swamps and you're probably wondering how does this thing handle riding through water which was a question that I had too and I was really kind of terrified to take it through water but as it goes you're biking along you see a little puddle you think it's this deep turns out it's this deep you freak out a little bit and as it turns out because these tires are so wide when you go through water if you maintain your speed a little bit they basically just push the water out of the way like a boat and it honestly stays relatively dry which was really surprising to me but they handled that kind of stuff really well so I'm super impressed with this setup I'm definitely gonna be using it for a long time uh, and if any of you guys are trying to build something similar Drop a comment if you have any questions. We'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have about this style of setup.
All right, guys, so this is the first Swamp and Stomp video that you've seen. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can see any of the other videos that we put out as the season progresses. And make sure if you like the content of this video, you give us a thumbs up. Um, and if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video or just about hunting in Florida in general, make sure you drop us a comment. We'd be happy to answer any of your questions. As I mentioned before, we're going to be putting up a video sometime this week to announce our new giveaway of some super sweet, brand new, collarless Rage broadheads. Perfect for archery season, which has just started and is going to be continuing for the next few weeks in Florida. With that, I'd like to thank all of you for tuning into Swamp and Stomp. And as always, be safe, stay diligent, and good luck in the woods, guys.